In this month of January, we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany and how um, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph were, were refugees uh, ch uh, fleeing the violence of Herod. And we know in the world that we live in today that um, the realities of immigrants and refugees uh, is, is, is global, it is world, worldwide. Uh, it also is, it impacts on our life here in California and in Sacramento in particular. One particular aspect of that problem is, uh, of that reality going on in our world, is human trafficking. The terrible, uh, tragic, uh, just uh, unthinkable reality that, uh, that human beings are, are being trafficked and traded as commodities. And that is going on around the world. Uh, but it is also going on here in Sacramento. And for that reason, I've invited Angela Lay to come and speak to us about uh, not only human trafficking, but what uh, we are doing, what people in our community are doing to address that. Angela, thanks for joining me. Good morning, Bishop. Thank you for the opportunity. Tell us a little bit about your work. Sure. Um, so, you know, being a Catholic, being a Christian, service to others has always been a big part of my life. And, um, and because of my background, because of my legal training, um, I started my career as a lawyer in the district attorney's office, which got me um, into the area of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And so after I left the district attorney's office, I decided that you know I'm going to continue to serve in this area. And in Sacramento, that's where I got um, in touch with an organization called My Sister's House. Um, and um, there, a lot of people don't realize that domestic violence and human trafficking have a lot of crisscross, have a lot oh. of crossovers. And, um, and especially in the area of human trafficking, uh, a lot of the clients we serve are um, women who are brought into the United States from other countries, um, uh, primarily the Asian, Pacific, uh, Asian and Pacific Islander um, countries and Spanish-speaking countries. Uh -huh. So at um, our my sister's house, for example, we have staff and we have volunteers who speak different languages, um, who understand the cultural aspects, the cultural backgrounds of our clients. And um, in part because of that, um, because of not just my legal skills, but also because I speak different languages, I speak two dialects of Chinese, that's where I got into um, the area of, um, at least get the opportunity to work with um, clients or victims of human trafficking. Now oftentimes, um, you know, the women who, who get lured into this, right. um, you know, that they that there could be economic or, or, or political or social upheaval going on in their, their countries. Uh, they're, they're looking for a, a way perhaps to come to the United States. Right. And, and they, get, uh, they get deceived. They, mm -hmm. And, um, and can, you, can you speak a little bit about that, that whole dynamic and, and, uh, that, uh, that gets these women here, you know, and, and what is the, the what, kind of nefarious, unfortunate, nefarious networks they get involved in. Sure, so when it comes to human trafficking, a lot of us know about sexual trafficking, yeah. right? We think of the you know, prostitution rings. We think of the young runaways. Mm -hmm. um, we even in Sacramento, we think about the youth um, in the foster care system. A lot of us don't um, realize that human trafficking, there are a lot of hidden victims of human trafficking. They are sometimes brought in, um, and, and, and a lot of times they, are, they can happen right in front of us. Um, some of these um, clients we have seen, these victims we have seen, um, we see them trafficked in nail salons, mm -hmm. in massage parlors, um, mm -hmm. even at your favorite restaurant. Um, sometimes in um, um, the caretakers at yeah. your uh, at your apartment complex, uh, hospice centers, nannies, mm -hmm. um, and um, obviously we see them at our parishes as well. Um, I'm not saying my parish, but yeah. you know it can happen um, pretty much everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so they um, and I'll, another group of what we call hidden victims of human trafficking are brought into this country. Um, through marriage, yeah, um, they um, what we call domestic servitude. Mm -hmm. um, they come into this country, you know, brought in from another country uh, through marriage, 
um, and then they get treated very poorly by their, you know, their families, their in-laws, their husbands. And the intent of bringing these women in, uh, you know, are always to enslave these women. Right. So there are different ways. And and then and then because they have, uh, you know, there, there could be a, a legal marriage involved, and their right. immigration status depends on that. Right. That they they're, they're trapped. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of times they, the, the, the clients we have served, the victims we have served, they may not even realize that, that they are being trafficked. Mm -hmm. They may not realize that, um, that they're being abused. Right. There are a lot of cultural aspects. Yeah, that their uh, situation is not normal. Right. And they may not even realize that they are uh, a legal, um, they are resources out there to help them. They may think, oh, you know, uh, my passport is taken or, you know, my husband is telling me that if, you know, he's not going to apply for a green card for me, um, they don't realize that as, you know, victims of human trafficking, um, there are resources for them. Or they may think, oh, what, what do I do with my kids? I may never see my kids again. Wow. Well, this month, January, is, um, is uh, Human Trafficking Month, or actually right. the prevention uh, of human trafficking month, right. and um, and if somebody wants to learn more about this, where do they need? Where should they go and and to get that information? Well, there are a lot of resources online. Um, uh, what we always say is be vigilant. Um, there are some good resources uh, locally. Obviously, organizations like My Sister's House, uh, we provide. Um, we have conferences. In fact, there is a conference coming up in January, uh, on January fifteenth on um, the connections of human trafficking and drugs. Um, but um, nationally, there's, uh, if, if you suspect that there's something suspicious and it's not uh, an emergency situation, um, or you may want to find out more about human trafficking, a good resource is the National Human Trafficking Resource Line. Mm -hmm. um, there's a website, they have a lot of resources, they have a lot of data, mm -hmm. um, and also it's also a good place for, um, to send tips. You can call, they can text, you can, they even have an online form oh. that you can actually um, provide information and then um, they, would, and they would give the information to local law enforcement. Well, Angela, I just very much appreciate the work that, that, and the dedication that you've given to this issue. And, and it, it's, it's wonderful to see you as a, as a Catholic um, uh, living out your faith um, uh, defending and trying to protect uh, 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 very vulnerable women and children who get caught up in this. And um, for anyone who's interested in, uh, in, in more about this issue, please go to the diocesan website and uh, look for more information uh, during the month of January. And as we try to inform ourselves, may we also at least bring this to prayer and see what is it that we can do to be more vigilant and to, uh, uh, to help uh, those who may be trapped in human trafficking uh, to find uh, hope and opportunities um, to, be, to be free. God bless you.